Welcome to my channel. Uh, I have a couple friends here in BC that have been watching what I've been doing with batteries, uh, namely Jeff and Barry. Um, so this is kind of for you guys. Um, this is in regards to the TSO. Now anything I might say is just my own opinion. It's my own understanding. I'm no expert. I'm not an electrical engineer, nor am I a battery expert. Okay. So if you know you see this video and and you think I got something wrong, by all means, make a comment. Set me straight if you figure that I'm I'm out of whack on something. Okay. I'm not claiming to know the ins and outs of any of this. Now what you have with this circuit is some new old batteries that were given up on and were slated for the dump. Okay, now I tried to do a couple of videos. It didn't work out too well. Um, so what I've done is I've started over again, but unfortunately I didn't really get a baseline set of data. You can see this is battery number two and it's actually cycle number two. Cycle number one was basically screwed up. Cycle number one essentially was a load cycle. They were brought to where I could take them with a conventional charger. Um, and basically what happens there is it brings them up, but then when they're left to rest, they sit at about 12.3 volts, 12.36 volts if they're given any time. So the concept is to equalize these batteries with the TSO circuit. Uh, which I have found uh, to work a lot better than a Jewel Thief or a uh, um, John Bedini SG circuit and partially it's got to do with the voltage if you look at the circuit over at IAC, IAEC you'll see how it places the battery or the source 24 volts in parallel as opposed to series with the load or the charge battery um, as it oscillates okay and consequently it appears to run a lot more efficiently and the voltages are just generally higher and the biggest thing you'll notice is unlike a jewel thief or an SG air core when you really try to push one it doesn't heat up and those circuits basically in my opinion both suck because when you try to do something heavy workload they heat up there's too much time in the negative current zone uh, they waste current basically is, is my view on it alright so anyway with battery number two on the second cycle um, I terminated uh, its charge okay and when it came to rest all right, it was sitting at 12.86. Now, I ran it on the 50 watt lamp, which is a 4.2 amp load, okay? It ran for um, 5.92 hours, at, at which it started off by dive bombing to 12.31 over here, came up to 12.35, and then steadily declined from there never really developed any kind of a plateau per se ended the charge at 12.07 the next day it recovered to 12.46 okay now just for your reference okay these are some charts that I've been using that I find quite useful and I'll, I'll just put it up for a moment okay if you take a battery to 12.06 this chart is a standing voltage okay so you must let the battery rest now the way I've been revolving it they rest at least 24 hours you can see that in my data so what you have is I'm taking it down to 12.06 okay but then it's coming to a rest at say 12.32 or somewhere in here so the state of charge is actually relatively high so this number of amp hours, 24.85, is what I got out of it. And somewhere in here is where its state of charge is when it's done. Okay. But obviously when you're running inverters and stuff, your voltage is of concern. OK. 
okay because they have kick outs and and then people just tend to like to kick things out at certain voltages okay so that's that chart that's a handy one that's a that's an at rest chart another chart that you should always have reference to is this chart right here now I hope you guys can see this stuff I, I, I guess I'm not gonna know until Right. and I'll post links to it okay now this stuff all come out of home power magazine alright so this is your lead acid battery state of charge versus voltage while the battery is under charge now C40 on this would be pretty close to what I'm doing because C20 would be 150 amp hours um, divided by 20 which would be somewhere close to seven and a half um, I'm running 4.2 amps, so you're looking closer at, you know, like C36 or something, okay? Now, what that tells you is that if you're charging at C36, all right, your state of charge is up into the 120% when you're up into the 15, 2, 5, 15, whatnot, which is where they end a chart. And that, ironically, is if you look at my data, I don't know how well any of this is going to come out on this video because I'm not one of those guys that can screen capture shit very easy. I don't know how to do that. If you know how to do that, you can let me know. Um, aside from pasting GIFs or whatever, JPEGs in there. But if you look at that, okay, um, that's the discharge, all right? But up top here, what I've got is final charge voltage was 15.35. So that's how far I took it up for. And this was the rest period was 48 hours, all right? So um, this load is 56% of C, okay? So that's, that's the thing. Now that one discharged the first time around from 845 at night all the way till 340 it was only 32 degrees out okay so it was colder that night so that was that was your first run there we'll uh, put that on for two seconds that's just cycle number two like you say cycle number one was conventional charge so I don't really deal with that okay um, now there's lots of ways that I could have made this more scientific but because I don't have the process automated um, you know I can't just you know my whole life can't revolve around this which is you know uh, makes it rather sometimes unscientific okay but nonetheless okay let's have a look at what happened nicely what I was able to do was when I needed to do the next run it turned out at least that my standing voltage well maybe I'll show you the charge here just a sec um, where's our charge here This was the charge in between two and three, okay? Right here. Now, you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot, I guess, on that. Oh yeah, I did put some extra numbers in. Okay, so 12.46 was the start of charge. It was a 25 hour charge. Now keep in mind, this is a 34 watt system. That's what it draws from the wall when you plug it into an AC watt meter. By the time it hits the battery, you're looking at 1.8 amps that's going into the battery. So it's not a heavy current setup, but then again, for what it is for transistor, it's not really, really wimpy like like a, an SG that you're trying to run cool or something. All right, um, all right. Now, 25 hours, 1,500 minutes later, it's hit that plateau of 15.51 probably petered off a couple hundreds that I uh, little technique by 49er that uh, he lets him know but charting has really helped me because I get busy and uh, I don't I don't visualize this while it's happening I don't see these plateaus starting and go oh it's been on a plateau for an hour uh, you know I, I just I get busy with stuff right so if I can just write down the number and I get back to what I'm doing and then I look at the chart as it develops on a screen. Okay, so that's that was the charge in between. Now the rest time, okay, the rest time that it had uh, this time was 63 hours. So it was taken up to 15.51, shut off, 63 hours in about, 
you know, ranging from uh, 38 to 42 degree weather, it ironically settled at 12.86 again, okay? Which I was pretty happy with as a standing rest voltage 62 hours later. Okay, so now here's what happened in this discharge. The total runtime was over eight hours at a 4.2 amp load, which equates to 35.28 amp hours. Uh, but this one ran during the day, okay? Ran it down to the same voltage and it recovered relatively close to the same voltage it recovered. Well, it's still recovering. Tomorrow morning it might come right up to 12.46. Wouldn't that be ironic that my start and my finish would be identical? So, most notably, I guess to me, is that there's more of a plateau forming. It dips down, its low is 12.37, and then it climbed to 12.44, and it actually ran, like this is a 100 minute mark, this line right here. Okay, that comes up. That's a hundred minutes that it's been running at this point. So it actually held 12.44 for you know the next thing to a full hour there before it started on to its decline. Um, so it is a is a, it is a bit different of a curve. Now keep in mind the scale of the chart is also different too because this was a uh, this ran for eight. 0.4 hours instead of 5.9 hours. So the first one produced 24.85 amp hours. This produced 35.28 amp hours. But something to a couple things to be considered is is that it was warmer during this one. All right. Although I have done some studying on temperature, and a six or seven degree temperature shift probably shouldn't show this good of an increase is they're already fairly low temperatures all right and I didn't make a chart of that but according to the chart it shouldn't fluctuate this much over a seven percent uh, thing but what we can't be sure is that both cycles were given the same amount of saturation of charge in other words how long did that amp charge go in so what I'll do on the next one on cycle number four and we'll look at that what I'll do is uh, I'll make sure that whatever the charge input for um, this one, I'll duplicate that charge input, okay? Whether or not it takes it to 15 point whatever, I will just duplicate that charge input. However, the point of this is actually to bring the voltage up quite high because that's where I believe the desulfation occurs. Now, I've been doing a lot of reading in the last four or five days, and opinions really vary when it comes to desulfation. A lot of websites just don't even wanna talk about it. 90% of all battery chargers don't go there. And what I'm starting to believe is that when you use these chargers, and you're, you're desulfating with them, and you're pushing them, uh, to the top limit um, essentially what you're doing is you're holding the voltage of the battery at that 120 percent overcharged mark but you're not heating up the battery with current not anywhere near what you would um, if you were doing it conventionally now if you were doing it conventionally opinions really vary how high you should take it anywhere from 15.25 for only two hours to uh, I've read you know 10 amp charge for uh, 20 minutes and you know it really varies right but if you think about it electrolysis occurs um, the more current you give electrolysis the more electrolysis you have and that's what's actually happening in my view is you're hitting that electrolysis point so two things are going to happen um, you're going to dissolve sulfate crystals but you're going to get uh, positive grid plate corrosion at the same time okay so um you know the the alistair cooper circuit picks away at it pinging away at it over a whole month the conventional desulfation method with high current high voltage 
kind of boils the shit out of the battery and it works but every time you do it you probably lose capacity as well because you're getting positive grid plate corrosion whereas this method is kind of somewhere in between you're up there ringing the bell and you're keeping the voltage heavy or high I should say with less current than you would with pulse width modulation all right thanks for watching and uh, if you have any views or whatever uh, Go ahead and, uh, and, and, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.